like clarity on how you should be managing your interior design projects, then watch this video. I'm going to share the process that my clients have been using. Uh, I noticed a, a few months ago or even a year ago that a lot of my clients, even if they didn't work alone, they still struggle to follow a clear process, um, a step by step for how they take on the projects and, you know, from the onboarding all the way to the offboarding. And if you don't have a clear process, you're really going to struggle. You're not going to look professional. You're not going to feel organized or established. You may also be missing deadlines and forget to order things when you're supposed to forget them. And overall, like even when you get to the procurement phase, then it gets all super stressful because you don't have a process. So that's why I want to talk about in today's video. I'm going to share this process. I actually posted a video a couple of weeks ago if you want to go back to the video. It, it was about the procurement phase of your projects. I was showing you uh, the ClickUp um, template that we use for our clients so that they are extremely organized and efficient. They, are, they feel more in control and less stress because they know what's happening. They know the status of everything that is happening on the projects for all their clients and there is no room for guesswork. They just have to follow the template. So if you want to go back to this video, I'm also going to link it uh, above here and you can go and watch it. Okay, so you've gone through the onboarding process with this new client. Uh, this would be mostly done in your CRM tool, client management tool, like Dubsado. I talk about Dubsado a lot. Uh, it's the tool that I use and that I have my clients use as well. I have a lot of videos on YouTube talking about Dubsado. In particular, I have one uh, explaining my process from the moment you get an inquiry all the way to onboarding them as new clients. So if you want to watch this video first, I recommend it. This video now we have onboarding this new client and we are moving on to the project management phase. Um, so the proposal was approved, you sent the contract, you sent the invoice, it's all been signed and paid. They got the welcome packet, you have activated their client portal and any onboarding documents that you wanted to share have been shared at this point. You should have already created a checklist of everything that needs to get completed before the kickoff meeting. That includes uh, information relating to their design style, uh, the likes, the must haves uh, and so on. So during the kickoff meeting, you're going to be able to gather any additional information that you haven't gathered before and you will sign off every final detail before you actually start the project. So if you go to their house, make sure that you have uh, photos of the existing space, you have done the site survey, uh, and you final, finalize any details uh, that you haven't done before you start working on the concept boards. The next big phase is the design development phase. It's going to be the longest one, uh, and it, it would be a good idea to, for you to outline the different phases of the design development. How many presentations are you going to do online or in person? Actually, all those details should have been in your proposal uh, so that all the details were approved and signed off uh, before you start. But, you know, make sure that your design development phase, whether you do it in ClickUp or Asana or whatever, uh, you're going to be outlining everything that needs to happen during the design development. So uh, first presentation where you present the mood boards, for example, when, uh, what date is it going to be sent? How long do you give uh, your clients for feedback? And then how long do you get to work on revising those boards, etc. So it's really uh, uh, going into details about everything that needs to happen during this phase so that you don't leave out anything, you don't miss deadlines, and it's all more smooth for you and for your clients. At the end of the day, I always feel like the more detailed you are, the better, uh, because otherwise the clients can come back and you know complain about something that they thought was gonna happen and didn't happen. So the more detailed you can get in your proposal and then also at onboarding, the better it's gonna be in the long run. In the scope of work, also make sure that um, you outline in details what is included and what is not included. Sometimes interior designers really underestimate um, how long things really take or they don't even consider that there will be revisions and don't include enough time um, to do revisions or they don't include how many revisions are included in their fee. So make sure that everything is clear and that they understand how many revisions are included, for example, and what is going to be your fee past the number of revision if they have more things that they want to change. On our ClickUp template that we set up for our clients, we have all the, the different tasks that need to happen during the design development phase. And for each one of those tasks, 
we're able to add the priority, uh, the date that is going to be delivered to the client, the date that um, you will need to send a brief to your outsourcing team if you decide to delegate so that you have the work on time for the presentation. Uh, you can add so many pieces of information that will allow you to have a full picture every time you get onto ClickUp. You have the full picture of everything that is in the process of getting done, everything that is outstanding, everything that has been delivered, that you're waiting for feedback. And the more you grow, the more projects you're going to have. So you want to make sure that everything is really detailed, but also easy for you to have the full overview. And the cool thing about this template is that you can even invite your um, clients to collaborate with you on the template. So if you wanted to share uh, the presentation on ClickUp, you can assign it to them uh, and tell them what, by when they need to send you feedback and everything can happen in one place instead of doing back and forth emails. So that, this is what I love about using a project management tool. So I feel like the phase that is the most stressful for E3 designers is the procurement phase. Uh, as you know, sourcing is very time consuming. Uh, you also have to make up for you know, budget, things that are not available, that are back ordered, products that can be shipped when you need them. So it's definitely a source of stress for my clients. And the more uh, you can prepare for it, the less stress you're going to feel and the more in control you're going to feel as well. Uh, so having something where you can have all the products, we have the procurement template, actually this is the video that I was referring to before. Uh, it shows you how we use the template and you can um, it, I mean, either get our template or you can steal from it and see what we have um, added as information. So you have all the information about all the products, you know who is in charge of purchasing each product if you have a VA for example. So this is what our VA does for our clients as well, she does the purchasing process. And so it's, it's nice that the client can see, okay, I'm in charge of this bunch of products and she's doing that. So they're not doing the same thing. It's very clear who's doing what, and they can also review the status on all the products that the other person is doing. Uh, so I really love that about this phase. It ensures that you don't wait the last moment to order things. And then the client complains because uh, pro they have to wait for months before the products or furniture arrives on site. So it's always good to be prepared and do everything in advance. And during the construction phase, that's the next one, you also have to be super detailed. How many site visits? Uh, when can you plan, like the dates? Uh, so of course, you're not gonna be able to do that exactly when you start the project because um, you know, depending on you, the clients, the contractors, things will not always go according to plan. So you will have to be a little bit flexible. But if you can kind of have a ballpark figure of when uh, the meetings are going to be, if you do weekly visit, is it gonna be on a specific day so that you're super organized? Uh, be clear about what the contractor should be delivering to you, like for drawings, for review, and how long you will need to send feedback. So it's really about thinking and fine tuning all the details. So the next step is the install. So again, think about everything that needs to happen at this phase because you will need to do quality control. So when are you gonna go uh, on site? Like actually, where is the furniture coming? Is it going to your studio? Is, is it going to a warehouse? Is it going to uh, the client's home already? So thinking about all of this is going to be tremendously helpful. Uh, and for the install, there's a lot of stuff that you're going to have to do. So outline those steps as well. Core, you, you will have to coordinate the delivery and the placement of the furniture, decor and accessories, according to everything that has been done. You will have to coordinate with the contractors and with your clients. So there's a lot to think about. Okay, and then the last thing is like you will have to schedule uh, for the space to be photographed. So. You will have to think about that early on, put yourself a date where you're gonna uh, talk to the photographer and plan a day that they can come in. And you will know that you will have to be available on that date as well. And final step number six is the offboarding. What do you need to include in your offboarding package? It's really important that you have one so that both parties are clear and they've signed off on everything so that your clients can come back and say that you didn't do this or that. Uh, it's really important to have this onboarding package outlining all the documents you need to hand over. So create a checklist of all the documents that you're going to have to hand over to them and have them sign off everything carefully. And then what I would do, I would plan a follow-up email. So I would plan a first follow-up email not too long after the project is done where you will request a testimonial because they're still excited at this point about their house and they will be happy to do it. And then a second email, two, three months after handover, where you're going to check back in, see if they're happy with their space, and maybe mention if you have a new service or you have a promotion going on, a special offer that they might be interested in. It's always good to check back, back in so they remember about you. 
and even potentially recommend you to um, some of their friends. So this is the step-by-step -step process that my clients use um, in their ClickUp template. If you are interested in learning more about ClickUp, we have a one-on-one -on -one setup service where we will go through your process and make suggestions to improve it. And then we will implement everything into ClickUp or Asana. Uh, I always talk about ClickUp, but we are now setting it up in Asana if that is what you're using. And if you wanted to just buy the template and edit it yourself, you can find it in our shop. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please comment down below and I will see you in the next video.